Welcome to our 100 square foot Leathercraft workshop tour. So it's, it's not a big space. We're in the basement and the space is about 10 feet by 12 feet. So just over a hundred square feet. It can get pretty tight with two people working in here, but we make do. This isn't some epic workshop tour, but I figured it'd be good to show people what our full-time leather workshop looks like. This basement wasn't finished when we first moved in. So this, this was just all concrete. The first thing we added to the workshop though was this workbench. And that's when I was just doing it as a hobby. It's a eight foot by three foot workbench and it's just made with two by fours and a nice laminate top. This workbench and these hand tools here were all we started with like four years ago. All this other equipment you see here was purchased slowly as our business grew. All right, let's, let's get started. We keep our leather in this corner. Otherwise, this is like a completely dead space. We use these concrete forming tubes we got from Home Depot. Uh, I think they're about like 13 to $15 Canadian. Um, and anytime I talk about cost here, it'll be in Canadian dollars because I'm Canadian. Uh, these are 10 inch by four feet tubes, I think. And they're awesome for storing leather. They're not the strongest tubes, and you can see that these bottom ones are collapsing a bit due to the weight. We call it the leather hotel, but if I'm being honest, it's more like a leather motel now, so. Or a leather motel. No, that's really bad, because they're cows. <laughs> So over here, we've got these two Skyvers that I purchased off Amazon. They're awesome, especially at the $100 price tag. They can skive a width of two inches, so not a lot, but it is ideal for straps. And they use these generic X-Acto knife blades. So I actually swapped out the original blade for these Ulfa heavy duty black blades. And I have to say, that was one of my sharper ideas. So I have two of these skivers for two different thicknesses of leather. Changing the skiving thickness is really finicky because you've got to adjust these little things and make it perfect and it's just, it's just a nightmare. So if you need to skive different thicknesses of leather, I used another piece of leather underneath the piece I was skiving and then I pulled it through. And that works surprisingly well. Okay, so this one ton arbor press this is one of my earlier purchases and probably one of the most used tools in the workshop this one is from princess auto i believe the american equivalent would be like harbor freight um, and this came with a hole and a set screw so we bought it for 79 dollars and we use it for setting rivets for setting snaps we also use it for stamping punching holes and before we purchased the clicker press i used it with some of our smaller dies We've never purchased a hand press because this has been more than sufficient. So definitely recommend if you're starting out in Leathercraft, this is a great investment. Okay, so beside the Arbor Press, we have the Hot Stamper. I also bought this about four years ago and we use it for personalizing everything. We have a bunch of brass letters we got from Wuta Leather and this machine is the ZS90 from Zone Sun. I think I bought it for about $150 on AliExpress and it, it does the job. Like that's the best description of this thing. It does the job. Uh, there's definitely way better hot stampers out there, but really hard to beat the red hot deal of the Zone Sun. So this is the Mighty Wonder 4 ton clicker press. We bought this for $2,000 a few years ago, all in. Um, I think it's a little bit more expensive now, but anyways, if you know what the clicker press looks like, you'll know that this base looks different. And that's because we modified it to have a large sliding 
cutting board. <laughs> There's stuff underneath. I was trying to fix it. <laughs> it normally moves smoother than this, guys. We actually did a video on this clicker press hack last year. You should watch it because it's actually impressive. We didn't have space for a hydraulic press and I didn't want to spend money for the eight ton press. So we did this instead and it cost under a hundred dollars to do so. So just to show you, this was the original cutting surface that came with the clicker press. And as you can see, it's now a lot bigger and you can cut way larger pieces with it. All right, on to the next thing. This is where we keep the best drawings. That's right. You probably didn't even know this was a drawing because that looks exactly like me. Oh, and uh, I wanted to tell you about this wall behind me here. It rules. All right. So the question I get asked the most is what kind of sewing machine am I using? So I have two sewing machines. I have a cylinder arm and a flatbed. And the cylinder arm is the Juki LS1341. And I purchased this used for about $1,500. Um, we're hoping to eventually add bags to our shop in the future. And this machine will get a lot more use then. Right now, we don't use it very often. So the flatbed is the Juki LU1508. And this machine, gets the most work because most of our products are smaller and flatter. I love this sewing machine. It's got a knee lift, a servo motor, and a speed reducer. I'm not 100% sure. I think this is an earlier 1508, 1508 model because it only has a single tension knob. And this whole tension system looks more like its predecessor, the Juki 563. I'm also using 92 bonded nylon thread, which I get from Waywack or Texo and Gross Becker needles. Gross Becker needles. Grosch Becker needle. I don't know how to say that. We're moving on. All right, so this is a Bell Skyver. This is the Texo SK4. I think it was about like $1,200. Uh, it's pretty standard for a Bell Skyver. I haven't been using this a lot, but hopefully if we get into bags, we'll, we'll use it more. If anyone knows of a Bell Skyver technician, please let me know because We love our workshop, though if we ever got a new space, I'd love to have a workshop with a lot more windows because this is all we have here. But you know what? You can't always window. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching our workshop tour and seeing what we have in our shop. As you can tell, our workshop is very well furnished.